The base of operations. Most people that have followed the division for at least a little while will know by now that in the game you will have a base that you will have to build up as part of taking back New York. And even though I've talked about this topic before, so much has changed in all these years of development that you almost won't recognize it from a few years back. And that is why for today's video, I'm diving straight at it and I'm diving deep because I can promise you that after watching this video, you will have learned more about the base of operations than you will have in all these previous years combined. So what do you say? Shall we begin? Not so long ago, we used to talk a lot about how the map in the division would be segregated in several different parts and they would be called districts. Each of those districts was supposed to have their own base of operations with their own progression. But instead of having a few smaller bases scattered around the map that you could build up as a side activity, the developers decided to go with one massive base and make it a big part of the game. Now, uh, don't get me wrong here, the map is still segregated in different districts. For example, we have uh, Pennsylvania Plaza or Chelsea. It is just that the progression will be global. The districts now determine how strong enemies are. For example, Chelsea will have enemies from level 2 to level 4, but in the district called Murray Hill, they will scale from level 24 to level 26. And I believe it goes all the way up to level 30, which I assume is the current level cap. But back to the base, we're not talking about the map. What is there to be seen inside and how do you build it up? When you first enter the base, you will notice that it has been divided into three major wings. We've talked about these before. They're called the medical wing, the technology wing, and the security wing. And all of these three wings are offline at first. To get them back online, you will have to complete special missions and bring in people who can manage these wings. In the case of the medical wing, you will have to rescue a so-called Dr. Jessica Candle, who is a biomedical engineer of some sort and who is currently being held hostage in the Madison Square Stadium. After rescuing her and bringing her on board, you will get a small cutscene when you enter the base again and the medical wing will become active. The same goes for the other two wings. You have to do a special mission to get someone on board. In the case of the technology, technology wing this will be Paul Rhodes, a tech guy, and in the case of the security wing it will be a police officer called Ray Benitez. But after getting both of them on board it is the same story. You will get a small cutscene for both of these guys and all the wings will become active. The only problem is, is that all these wings will still be at 0% completion. And you probably already guessed it, it is up to the player to build up each wing and progress them to 100%. Each wing has a list of 10 things that you can possibly upgrade. In in the case of the medical wing, this can be a clinic, a virus lab, a decontamination unit or a pharmacy. But in order to build these, you will have to get special supplies. They're called medical supplies. These medical supplies can be obtained by doing special medical missions. One of those missions is, like I said, to rescue that Dr. Jessica. But there are many more of these kind of missions that will reward you with medical supplies. And usually these missions will be indicated with the medical logo on the minimap. It's again the same story for the other two wings, the technology and the security wing. Although you will have a different list of things that you can upgrade. For example, for the tech wing, you can get a control room and for the security wing, you can get K9 units, but the idea is the same. You will have to go out to do special technology or security missions in order to get special supplies, which you can then use to progress that wing. And I gotta be honest with you, it sounds like you're gonna have to put a lot of effort into building up your base. So what is the player getting out of this besides a better looking base? Well, rewards come in three different forms. You have skills, you have talents, and you have perks. When moving away from the base of operation for just a second and looking at the player progression, you can see that each time that you level up your character, you will get one or more ability points, which you can then spend on skills and skill modifications. But as most of you also know, most of the skills and skill mods are locked behind a certain percentage. If you hadn't guessed it by now, you will need to progress a wing in the base of operations to a certain percentage to unlock these locked skills and mods. And the exact same goes for the talents in the game. You can unlock talents by spending ability points, but most, if not all of the talents are locked behind a certain percentage amount that needs to be achieved first. If you want to unlock the first two talents in the medical section, well, you have to get 20% completion in the medical wing. It is as simple as that. And we also have another form of rewards. These are called the perks and they work a little bit different. You do not unlock them through progressing a wing, nor do you have to spend ability points. The perks in the game are unlocked whenever you spend your supplies on any given upgrade in the base. 
As an example, when you spend your medical supplies on the clinic for the medical wing, you will automatically also get the medkits perk, which allows you to permanently carry one extra medkit in your inventory. Spending your supplies on other upgrades will give you other perks, and some upgrades will even give you multiple perks, so it is really worth looking into which ones you want to get first. But uh, yeah, to sum it up, you have to complete special missions in order to get special supplies, and you can then spend these supplies to upgrade your base. The more you upgrade your base, the more skills, talents, and perks you will be able to unlock. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the base of operation works. But for those wondering, besides the three wings, the base will also have a lot more than just these three wings. You have vendors for weapons, weapon mods and gear, you have your own personal storage, you have a crafting bench and you can refill on ammo and so forth. But um, those are kind of topics for another video, so I'm going to end it right here. A lot of big YouTubers had been invited to special events to privately play The Division where they were also allowed to record the game for a full 3 hours and then use it to make videos. I wasn't invited to any of these and the only way I could really get footage is because one of my friends Silentcore was kind enough to share his footage with me, so a big thanks to him. Of course, a link to his YouTube channel is down below in the description. And that pretty much sums it up for today, but don't you worry, I will be back very soon, if not tomorrow, with another video, so just keep an eye out for that. But until then, I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!